Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of our die sets. This is die number 1132, the purse pop-up, and you can check out all of our die designs at karenberniston.com. There are 11 dies in the set, and I'll start with the big one, which makes the actual pop-up box that becomes either the purse or the suitcase. So you can use any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer-thin die, and today I'm using my Spellbinders Platinum 6. Okay, I'll start by finding the folds that create the top of the purse. So right along the edge, it folds down, both the front and the back. And then there is a handle, so that's going to fold upward. And then there's this little lip on the other side. So I'm just finding those score lines, folding that lip upward. Okay, and then there are four more folds to find in the piece, and they're the ones that bring everything around to make it that box shape. So four folds that will all be folded away from you. And then out on the end, you'll be left with this little tapered tab and that's what's used to join the two sides together. So you just need any kind of strong adhesive that could be tape or glue. I'm using my Lineco Neutral pH adhesive in my fine tip bottle. We do sell both of those items on our website. And you can definitely attach that sort of in that flat position. So just flatten out the box. That way you can make sure that everything's lined up straight as you glue that tapered tab inside the box. And then once the glue sets up, you'll have the box. It'll fold flat in both directions. Okay, looking at the top of the purse, what happens is this entire handle section goes through the slot on the other side. So you've just got to work that entire handle through the slot. Okay, so now the center section here has a few little score lines in it because you can kind of roll it over the top of that little strip of paper and then there's a slot on the other side for that tab to go through. So just either fold it or roll it, you know, however you want to do to get that tab in a position where you can get it easily through the slot on the other side. And you don't really have to do anything but just push it or pull it from inside the purse until it clicks into place. It doesn't need any adhesive. You just push it until it clicks. And then that is all there is to it. So you can see here that the top of the purse is going to slide into the closed position. And then as the card opens, it'll slide up towards the center. You always choose your card size with our dies, so I have chosen to make a standard A2. I've started with a piece of cardstock, 8.5 by 5.5, scored in the center for folding. And then I just added a couple pieces of pattern paper cut a little bit smaller. And I like to put the purse inside the card sitting on kind of like a decorative plate, so I've chosen this oval from our crosshatch ovals. And then this is the die that does the pop-up, and it has the alignment nubs that you would normally line up over the fold of the card. But if you're doing something like a shape, like this oval, or maybe it's just a you know, rectangle that you've cut or a square, you can put the die in place first because it's the exact size of the purse. That way you can make sure that your purse is centered to your liking. Then you can just take a pencil and note where the score line needs to be by just adding a little pencil mark on each of the alignment nubs. And that way you don't have to guess ahead of time. You can let your purse kind of dictate where that fold line needs to be. And then once I have that fold line in, then I can go back and put the die over the top with the alignment nubs right over the fold, some temporary tape to hold that in place while I roll that through my machine. So what that die does is it cuts the two tabs that hold the purse in place and they both fold upward like this. The fold in this oval is going to line up with the fold of the card. But actually, since my card has a fold in it already, I really would rather not have a fold lined up in a fold because then it's very difficult to get the card to open fully flat open, which is how you want to view the purse. So instead, I'm going to take my scissors and just trim on either side of the fold of my oval and just remove a little sliver of cardstock so that when this goes into the card, it can just sit next to the fold on both sides. And I like to leave just a little bit attached. You can see at the, top, at the top, I haven't separated this into two pieces yet because if I keep it together like this while I put the purse in place, it just makes it a little bit easier. Okay, so adding that strong glue to my little tab, that's the one that fits on the short side of the purse. So I just need to get the purse down over the tab. I like to stick my pinky finger from underneath the oval so that I can press against it with my thumb. So I'm basically getting a lot of pressure against that so that it can set up inside the purse. Okay, and then I'll do the long tab. So the tab gets the adhesive and where it's going to go is inside the purse and you'll see that it just fits snug to the corner. So that tab will be all the way out to the corner of that purse. And once again, you want the purse all the way flat against the oval. You can use fingers on either side of the tab to really give it some pressure to set up. 
Okay, once my purse is attached to the tabs, then I'm ready to install this inside the card. You can see it's just gonna straddle the fold on either side. I can go ahead and complete that cut now so that it will turn the oval into two pieces, but of course the purse is going to hold it together. And then once I get that little sliver of cardstock out of there, now the oval is in two pieces. So it'll be up to me now as I glue this inside the card to make sure that I keep it straight. Okay, collapsing the purse down and then folding the right side of the oval over the left side, that is the flat position. So I can line that up with the fold to figure out where it should go inside the card so that the purse stays within the card in the flat position. So then just a strong adhesive all over the base of the left side of the oval and then just lining that up so that it butts right up to the fold and then just making sure that I've chosen a spot where the purse stays in the card. And then now in the flat position, I can go ahead and add the adhesive all over the other side of the oval. And I can either close the card against it or stretch it across the fold and put it into place. Then I'll be able to just close the card and the purse will be working as a pop-up. Okay, then I'm going to add glue all over the front of the purse and add the decorative piece to the front that has the little stitch lines and the Percy shape. And then there is another die in the set that cuts the flap of the purse and that has a fold line in it that lines up with the fold of the box. And then I like to also glue that purse shaped piece to the back as well. And that piece is designed with those little clipped corners so that it can slide down into the closed position. But that first time you might just want to look at that front corner and maybe kind of tuck it a little bit inward so that as you close the card it learns to tuck into that closed position and doesn't fold outward. The die set includes a little flower that can be a great little decorative clasp for the front of your purse. I like to add a rhinestone or enamel dot to it, but you could also use the stencil feature just to fill in the center. And I like how easy it is to make a flat purse as well. So just with a scrap of paper over the pop-up die to get the handle and that little center roll down section, then you can just use that with the decorator pieces to fashion a purse that's flat. That's perfect, for instance, for the front of the card. Okay, and then I just finished out the decoration of my card. So for the front, I made it say with love by taking with from our new with sympathy set and love from our word set nine. I also used our tiles pattern plate and border blends argyle. And I used those same borders around the perimeter of my card on the inside and then added in our new dolled up charms and the thank you. And of course I was already using the ovals. Okay, and my finished card is just a standard A2, so it will mail in an A2 envelope. So the purse doesn't open because, of course, it needs that sliding mechanism at the top to work, but you have spaces to tuck little things in. Now, somebody asked about a gift card. The purse isn't big enough to hold a gift card, but I wanted to show this idea by Karen Aiken, where she just made a little pocket on the left side of the flat part of the card to include a gift card. I thought that was very clever. The die set also includes some decorator pieces for when you want to style this as a suitcase instead of a purse. So you're going to start out by making the pop-up box identical to as if it were a purse. So creating the box shape and then getting the handle and the center section through the slit at the top. The center section rolls over the top and into the slot on the other side, pushing it through until it clicks. Now I designed it so that that little rollover section would be decorative and I like that as the front of the purse or suitcase, but you do have the option to just turn the entire piece around and then you can use the back as the front and you can see it has a little bit of a different look. So you don't see as much of the rolled section and you also don't see as much of the suitcase being open. For those decorator pieces in the set, there is a buckle. I decided on some glitter for my buckle. I like to just take a tool and go in there and kind of work the slits so that it makes it easier to get the strap through. So there's a little stitched strap die in the set that just pushes through the buckle like this. In addition to the buckle and the strap, you have a die that will cut the four decorative corners. You can either limit those just to the front of the suitcase or you can keep cutting them and go around all the corners.
since I'd turned the suitcase around, the handle was the green, which was the back of the paper, and that didn't match so well with the brown. So I just took a scrap of brown over the pop-up die to get the handle section using adhesive only in the upper section so that the bottom could still slide. And you can see how I added more of those little corner pieces to the top and the sides of the suitcase as well. And you can definitely experiment with different shapes to be below the suitcase or the purse. In this case, I'm just using a tag die. And instead of scoring at first, I just marked it with the alignment nubs and just drew the line on since I knew I was going to cut it away anyway. So I didn't really have to score it first. I just used the pop-up die to get the tabs, then just drew a straight line so that I could see where to cut. And then I'm going to do that same trick where I take out a sliver around that line so that that can go straddle the fold of the card. And then I leave it a little bit attached so that I can attach the suitcase to it before I finish out the cut. I attach my suitcase to the tabs exactly like I did with the purse. Then I'll finish out cutting the rest of that fold away so that the tag becomes two pieces much like the oval did. And then I just find that flat position of the suitcase where part of the tag folds over the top of the other part. That's the side that'll line up with the fold. It doesn't matter which side you glue on first. You just once again have to pay attention that you're placing it low enough in the card that the suitcase will be hidden by the card when the card is closed. And I like to leave that little gap in the fold. That's why I cut that little sliver out of the tag. So you definitely don't have to have a large item underneath your suitcase or purse, just enough to hold the pop-up tabs. I just used a label maker for the front of the card to say, have a great trip. And then inside I used the word enjoy from our word set six. And three other little accessories that come included with the purse die set are that plane and the postage stamp. And then there's a little tiny tag that's on top of the suitcase attached to the handle. Now the tag that the suitcase is sitting on that I used as decorations, the big tag, that actually comes out of our tag book die set. I love to end assembly videos with inspiration from our design team. So here is a travel card by Kelly Booth. We have a new set of dolled up charms that goes great with the purse shown here on this card by Kelly Booth. Slimline cards are very popular right now and Frances Byrne shows how the purse pop-up will fit in a slimline. I love Sandy Diller's choice of animal print for the purse on this card, along with a matching pair of animal print shoes from the dolled up charms. Lois Bach decorated the purse as a medical bag for this great Get Well Soon card. And I would say that Sandy Diller definitely nailed it with this idea of converting it into a toolbox. And then finally, another really clever idea by Sandy Diller, this time converting the purses into a circus train. The purse pop-up die set, which can also be done as a suitcase, is available on our website as well as a lot of your favorite online and local retailers. Shipping starts August 3rd, 2020. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com where you can find out information about purchasing these dies as well as links to all my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.